For over 20 years, my next guest was married to the legendary Bing Crosby. And now she's written a wonderful book about their life together called My Last Years with Bing. Please welcome Catherine Crosby. <laughs> to the show. You know, I am a big fan. Forget about Bing Crosby for a moment. I am a big fan of yours because when I was a kid sitting in the Embassy Theater on Fulton Street in Brooklyn watching a great movie called The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Oh. Right? I mean, that was the and that's the first time I'd ever seen any kind of remember the cyclops in there? Yes. That, it oh, was yes. like it was like the first special effects I'd ever seen as a kid. And it turned out to be memorable because it's the best. It's a wonderful Ray movie. Ray Harryhausen painted every little cell with these animals that he created. And he had a cuddly rock. You know, <laughs> the two-headed right, bird right, with, right. The, with the eggs. And it, it was kind of it cuddly. Was a, do you remember that movie, folks? It was just incredible, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so. The great Bing Crosby. You know, we had Tony Bennett here uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, lucky enough to have him here. And I, I asked him who his, uh, you know, his inspirations were. And he immediately said Bing Crosby. And I, and I, I go back to when I was a kid, my my mother loved Sinatra, my uncle Tony, her brother loved Bing Crosby. There was always a beef at the, at the dinner table about well, who was better, you know. Yes, well, But he, he really knew, was the course. beginning of that style of singing, am I right? Yeah. He used the microphone like you do. Right. He was very comfortable with it. Uh, Rudy Valley, before that, uh, they said, uh, yelled through a, a megaphone. A megaphone. And that was all, so, and you had to sing boy tenor up high like Ethel Berman did to get out through the orchestra and get through those 45 trumpets, but Bing just could sing with yeah, the, with no, the microphone. Um, and he never took a singing lesson, am I right? I mean, well, he, he didn't have to. He, he sang every day. Yeah. And it, and he was Irish with a thick chest, so he had right. lots of air in there. And uh, the thing I've noticed in traveling around and listening to more of the films and our shows together, he always modulated his voice so that he didn't upstage. Right the guests. He always presented the guests very nicely, even when it was Nathaniel, age two. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He was very so so how, how did you meet him? How, how did you... At Paramount Pictures. At Paramount. You're yes, working I there. Was, I was 18. I met him when I was 19. Uh, I was a starlet. Right. And he was just your ordinary run-of-the-mill superstar. Right. <laughs> he was the man. I mean, he was the man. Well... He I'm was a... the number one box office for years in, in a row, I think, uh, uh, there's one stretch, where, well, it's like for 20 years, but there's one stretch where he goes four or five years in a row where he's number one. Yeah. So, uh, no, he was huge. Um, you know, I, I, I'm so interested in him. You know, he had such a, such a cool way about him. I mean, he, you know, like in, uh, when he did Robin and the Seven Hoods, when he, yes. he was the, he was just always so smooth. Uh, was he really just... I thought he was smooth. <laughs> in, in, fi in fact, I have found that Almost all great men are height disadvantaged. Aha! Uh -huh. See, Cameron Mannheim? <laughs> a big size. Thank That's you. very true. Yeah, yeah, because Cameron made a comment about I, me, I, my I height. I listened you backstage that, yeah. and I thought, well, this is the time to slide that in. Very nice of you to slide that in, I might say. It's getting to be Christmas. So, look, I just want to show the book oh. here. Here's the book. It's a wonderful book. It's all <laughs> stories and it's really beautiful. And the pictures. The pictures are unbelievable. What do you think? You think uh, you think Bob Bob Hope and uh, and Bing are together in heaven doing road pictures up Who there or knows? something? Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? I yeah. know that Dolores beats me in gin rummy every time I see her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I just I get so to just looking at him. It's just amazing. I think about my 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 family because he was such a. You'd hear these records as I was growing up. You'd hear his stuff and. You know, and then White Christmas, because now it's that time of year. Yes, it is indeed that it's time of year. The most popular song. Well, you must, when you hear that, it must bring back... The only time it ever really got me was when I was doing uh, the, the Seagull in Russian in Siberia. And they played Bing's record of White Christmas, and I hadn't heard it for a few years, or a couple of years, and I cried, uh -huh. you know, and so did they. Right. And they had not been exposed to his voice during the Cold Wars. And, and, oh, uh, that's right, they hadn't, you know, uh, so, uh, well, Captain, I'd love to sit and talk with you about Bing Crosby yeah. for the rest of the day. Please come back and talk to us some more. Good luck will, with the now book. Now, listen, I've got to tell you about trigeminal neuralgia because no, well, there you, are you, answers. Uh, well, I appreciate that, but well, this is live, and I'm going to have to... I'm going oh, to go? I have to go, Captain. I'm so sorry. Have a Merry Christmas. My last year's with Bing is in bookstores right Merry now. Christmas. We'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Thank you.